just made it. Uh, congrats, we're just about to dive into the latest PTP on Dead by Daylight, which includes the newest survivor and the newest killer. Uh, they're both very related, like, uh, unlike some other DLCs where the killers, you know, the, their stories are actually very much intertwined. Super, super quick lore uh, summary. Uh, Judge In Lee is like a producer and a talent manager, uh, and she's basically like a Korean star and celebrity. Uh, Judge In Lee. And the trickster, uh, actual name, uh, we'll see, we'll see later, is basically a, a young star gone kind of crazy. Uh, we're gonna have a look at the other uh, perks and the ones from Junjin, uh, they're, they're really, really sweet. This is what she looks like. And we're gonna have a look at the other uh, perks in tier three, actually, which we can do very easily by jumping into a custom game. This is what the Tristan looks like. He's a very handsome boy. And I'm gonna go for, hold up. I'm gonna switch to survivor. And we're gonna press here and this should show us the three perks at the perfect level. So this is what they do at tier three. The first one is called Fast Track, and it's one of the few perks that actually speeds up uh, generators. So immediately very, very interesting. Uh, sometimes the sacrifice of others is necessary to get ahead. Whenever another survivor is hooked, you gain three tokens. You consume all tokens after a great skill check on a generator. Each token consumed grants a 1% bonus progression for great skill checks when repairing generators. Uh, so basically, um, for each other survivor other than you that gets hooked, you're going to be able to save a little bit of time uh, on a generator. And if you know 1% is basically 0 0.8 seconds, so having three tokens, that if you do the math, that's uh, 0 0.8 three times, it's uh, 2.4. So for every person that gets hooked other than you, you will be saving... 2.4 seconds. Now, that doesn't seem incredible, but you gotta realize that this perk works passively. So, you can be running the killer a little bit, having a couple people, then when you sit on a gen, you will be able to use all those tokens at once, and maybe a gen that's halfway done can be very, very quickly with the toolbox and with this perk, can be very, very quickly uh, advanced and maybe even completed. Um, so, it's immediately very, very interesting, and I, I wonder if we will find itself into into the meta. That's fast track, the first perk. After that, we have smash hit, which has the weirdest uh, 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 the weirdest uh, perk I gonna seen in a long time, and it's a new exhaustion perk, right? It's a spin burst, basically. Uh, it's like a life. It's like a balance landing, but it doesn't trigger on press or it doesn't trigger on ball. It triggers on pallet stuns. So, it's a perk that basically gives you an incredible amount of distance on the average killer if you pallet stun them. And honestly, many people had come with ideas like this, and I really, really like it. Um, so, I think I think this would be great. It could be really, really powerful. And then we've got self-preservation, which has a really cool uh, icon as well. And this is more of a stealth perk. Life's unforgiving. The more confirmation you get of that, the more prepared you become. Whenever another sword within 10 meters of you gets hit by a basic attack or a special attack, self-preservation activates, your scratch marks are hidden for 10 seconds. Now, I wish this perk did a little bit more, but basically it gives you a poised effect anytime, uh, without any cooldown as far as I can see, anytime your teammates get hurt. So, if you want to go for a flashy save or maybe creep up behind a killer uh, to go for a quick rescue, you will have that, uh, that moment of stealth. Uh, and that's it for the survivor perks. Uh, you guys can't read it very well? Uh, guys, we... You literally are not missing anything out because of my webcam. Like, I literally read it out. There's no information out there. You're, you're good. <laughs> out of the needs of buff? Uh, it doesn't... It doesn't... You're, you're still gonna need Iron Whale if you're injured. You're still gonna leave blood, so you're still gonna need a lucky break. It doesn't hide you completely. So, it's probably the weakest of the three perks. But I can see this perk being a bit better if it gets changed. And it's still a cheeky perk. I, I like it. 10 seconds is a lot of time, by the way. With 10 seconds, you can... If you're healthy, especially, you can go very, very far and leave no tracks for a very long time as a survivor. So, it's it's definitely not bad. Although, it does strike me as the weakest. Now, let's have a look at the killer side. And... The name of the trickster is a G1 Hack. There you go. That's the actual name of the character. And we're having a look at his perks, too. Starstruck, which looks 
super fabulous. Uh, I really, I really like this one. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna take a little screenshot, and this will help with the YouTube video that I'll pull up later. I'm gonna take another. Uh, this is Starstruck. Your unmatched showmanship dazzles all. Starstruck activates when you are carrying a survivor. Survivors within your terror radius suffer from the explosive for 30 seconds. And then there's a cooldown to 90 seconds. Uh, this perk doesn't seem so good. Uh, at, at first, at first look, right? You pick up a survivor, everyone around you gets uh, exposed, but you're carrying someone, so you're not really gonna hit them unless you have agitation or whatever. Uh, until you realize it's not just while you carry. If you manage to hook a survivor in just a couple seconds, everyone around you is exposed. I, I immediately think that this perk can be disgusting on Nurse. Imagine a small map like the game. I pick up a Dwight in the middle, uh, I have agitation or whatever. Big terror radius, right? Maybe I'm playing Doctor with a huge terror radius. So I pick up, I hook immediately, and now for the next 20 or whatever seconds, everyone's exposed. This is gonna be either a complete waste of a perk or, or really, really oppressive. And I honestly can't tell which one it's gonna be. I don't see it being great on other killers like, you know, M2 killers such as, I don't know. Uh, like, like Legion, no, you know, people, uh, uh, the, the kinds of killers that don't, um, that don't go for M1, uh, all that often, or that can out of the injured survivors, but it seems, seems pretty strong. Good against body block, oh yeah, this should completely destroy body block, and this perk is a, I would say, pretty much a straight upgrade to, uh, Mad Grid from Legion, uh, and then some, so yeah. Yeah, you, you also, like, not only do you stop body blocking, you also stop, uh, because you, you're gonna carry a survivor to a hook, and that's, that's always gonna take you less than 16 seconds. So for the next 15 seconds, no one that's around you is going to be able to, to really go for a quick rescue or anything, so this could be a really strong endgame perk. You hook a guy, no one can dive into the hook to take a hit or anything like that. Uh, force oppression, oh, you mean force penance, yeah, force penance, like, who's gonna run force penance when you could have this? Yeah, for sure. This perk immediately outclasses at least a couple other perks. Uh, it's not my favorite of, of the three, because I've already had a look at all of them. But I'm a bit concerned. We'll see how it works. Now, this next one is going to make you all lose your collective minds, all right? It's called Hex Crowd Control. It's a hex that ensures that those lesser than you are properly herded. The entity blocks a window for 14 seconds after a survivor performs a rush vault through it. So it's basically a uh, map-wide, no cooldown, bamboozle. Uh, which is very, very scary to think about with, for some of the killers, right? It's honestly ridiculous. But if you stop to think about it, there are some conditions. Number one, it's a hex, so it can be destroyed. Number two, it's only for, uh, for rushed actions. So, a survivor can still play around it by slow vaulting, but of course, if you slow vault, you, you know you're opening yourself up for for maybe a, a, an attack or a follow-up of some kind. Uh, so, I, I find this really, really interesting, because, like, with the Blight, we had Hex block favor to block pallets, and that was worthless. And this one, I think, is going to be really strong, and it could honestly be very oppressive if you don't manage to find it early. And you're playing in a map like Shelter Woods, and there's like two two windows, and you go through one and it's blocked. And as far as I understand it, if you go through two windows, they're both gonna be blocked. Bamboozle only works on one window at a time, and if a killer follows you through another window, um, then the first one will become unblocked. Uh, this does not have such a limitation. So, it's pretty nutty. And yet, this is not my favorite perk. My favorite perk from the Trickster is the third one. Thank you all for the subs, by the way. Uh, which is... Honestly, really, really, really nutty, and something that I've been wanting in the game for the longest time. Anytime someone asks me, what perk do you want in this game? This one. No way out. Uh, it's a little bit cut, but don't worry. Uh, I'll read it out for you. You're not going to let anyone into the VIP room. Each time you hook a unique survivor, no way out gains a token. When the last generator is repaired, the entity blocks both exit gate switches for 10 seconds for each token in your possession. This makes Remember Me look like a kitty perk. It is so good. 40 seconds if you hook everyone in the match. Maybe a bit less, maybe 30 if you manage to get 3 out of 4. That is so powerful. Um, flashbacks to that one scene from Watchmen. You're not locked in here uh, with me, you know, <laughs> that one scene. It's so, so strong. This basically means 
that if you hook everybody once, you got 40 seconds before they can touch the exit goods. And then after that, of course, it's 20 seconds for each exit good. So unless they have a key, they really are locked in there for a long time. This allows you to uh, purposefully let them finish end and still camp someone to death and then get the last two or slug everyone a little bit more knowing for a fact that they cannot get the egg. It is so good. And it makes uh, it makes the, the end game part of the game, which is typically not all that interesting these days, potentially a lot more fun and engaging and also rewards you for hooking all the survivors. This is a perk where if you just go for that one clavette and you just camper forever, uh, it basically does nothing. 10 seconds is very little. Guaranteed 40 seconds, however, is quite a lot. So yeah, and I imagine as well, you can all imagine you can combo this no problem with the current Noed, with the current Bloodworthen, with Bitter Murmur, which will show you the autos of everyone for 10 seconds by the time the fifth gem pops. So immediately has a lot of synergies. And of course, you could also you could also put Remember Me on top. And then it would be 40 seconds of waiting. And then if you have Remember Me at max stacks, that'll be 16 seconds. So then 36 seconds to open Exigates if you're not the obsession. Right? So <laughs> you could you are gonna be able to delay the game uh, a lot more without necessarily uh, being able to to just only slow down gens, which is really, really good. Um, and when Nina is ready, we're gonna hop in and test all of this uh, at once. If not, we are gonna have to look at the power. Nina, how? What's your ETA? Are you are you ready to join us in a minute? Soon, not yet. Ah, right. Thank you so much. Right. So let's have a look at the power. Uh, which is that's pretty much the most important thing about the killer. So uh, the trickster, as you can see, is a 4.4. Uh, AKA 110% movement speed killer with a smaller than usual terror radius. So it's basically, you know, think spirit, think hag. Uh, that's what we're looking at. He is average in terms of uh, of height, which means he's, you know, uh, on that level, he's not as tall as, say, doctor or trapper, um, if you compare it to the other killers. So he's a bit shorter. Uh, we'll have a look at cosmetics as well. Don't, don't worry. We don't know how many of them uh, will be in the PTB, though. And this is his power, uh, the showstopper. A mesmerizing skill. Uh, for this one, I think maybe it is a good idea to perhaps um, remove my webcam. So forgive me for that. All right, let's have a look. A mesmerizing skill honed through a lifetime of practice. G1 hack unleashes a flurry of knives with rapid fire speed. Start the trial with 60 blades. Press and hold the power button, that's M2, to wind up and enter the throw state. While in the throw state, tap the attack button to throw a single blade or hold on the attack button to unleash a flurry of blades. Throwing a flurry of blades increases control and throw rate while decreasing movement speed. We stock blades at a locker. So in that regard, he works exactly like the Huntress, except instead of having five uh, <laughs> throwing hatchets, he's got 60 uh, throwing knives, basically. The laceration meter. A survivor's laceration meter increases each time they're hit by a blade. Once the meter is filled, they will lose a health state, either becoming injured or down. A survivor's laceration meter will gradually decrease if they have not been hit by a blade for a short time. Hitting a survivor with a basic attack will immediately decrease their laceration meter. And then he's got a special ability, which is basically like an Overwatch ult. All right, he builds it up and then he releases it and it makes him stronger. And if we're if we're going to continue on the Overwatch, think of like, I don't know, what, what would you compare this to? Think of like Torbjorn. He gets speed up. That's basically what main event does. When you activate a uh, main event um, by pressing the ability button, the trickster temporarily unleashes his full potential, wielding an unlimited number of blades. So he goes full, you know, full, um, full carnage, uh, infinite ammo. His throw rate is significantly increased, and his movement does not slow down on the throw state. So similar to Huntress, he does slow himself down while throwing, but while using this power up, he goes nuts and moves at 110, uh, as far as I understand it, for the whole duration, which I think is like a few seconds. Um, so that's basically it. And the difficulty is easy, although I'm not sure how, you know, how on board I am uh, with that idea. I think I think this killer sounds quite complex by the by the sound of it. Um, so the way I understand it, basically, 
is that he's like a Huntress, all right? That is obviously, that is obviously much faster, but it's not just hitting you with one um, hatchet. He actually needs to hit you with several. So that's the idea. We're gonna put on his perks. Nina will hopefully do the same for the survivor. And all right, here's Hex control. Hex control. And mm -hmm. this one's hard to see with just one. We're gonna put in a yellow Mori so that we can see that as well. Uh, da -da -da -da. And our final perk is. Give me just a second. <laughs> all right, dude. Starstruck. Beautiful. And we'll check the add-ons in just a hot minute once we've seen the power in play. Nina, thank you very much. Are you ready? I'm gonna take that as a yes. Right then. Uh, yes, bye. right. Thank you. Uh, right, we should have the ability to see the power on the screen right now. Let's see if we can make that happen. Oh, there you go. There is the power again, If in case you want to read it while we load in. Um, is there any questions you guys, ha you guys have? Uh, because maybe maybe we can answer it or find out as we go. This will be the first time uh, we're doing this. But yeah. And basically, think of this as a faster uh, Huntress. That just needs to hit you, not with one hatchet, but with several. <laughs> How many projectiles? We're gonna check. We're gonna check. I, I haven't seen it yet. And also, it it does- that's true. Also, it does go down with time. So, there's no new map, by the way. Oh. Alright, th that hiccup was a bit scary. There's no new map. <laughs> so, we're just gonna be on one of the random ones. Alright, he's got a really cool metal bass with like a brass knuckle kind of stuff. We're gonna see some of these animations and the sound. This is kind of cool. Hi, Junjin Lee. Welcome. How are you? You want to vault a window? Uh, and try to loop us a check a little bit? See what Hex crowd control will do? Wow! As you're going through it, all of the block. Okay, you want to check another window? See if it also is blocked? Oh, the overlay? Oh, thank you guys. I'll remove it. Don't worry, you haven't missed anything yet. Thank you, chat. Yep, so... Can we find two windows next to each other, Nina? To see if we can block them both. Oh, okay. This is an L2 wall. Perfect. So that's a window blocked. And that's a window blocked. Yeah, Survivor quickly going through windows basically means that this perk will do that. Uh, every other perk, you know, is going to be interesting. Right, so with 110. Uh, Nina, you want to break the uh, drop the pallet? We'll see what it looks like when we break it. All right, well, start running. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pelt you with these knives. All right, uh, it's really hard to see actually, but she has a HUD that. Okay, there's a little stream there. Did you lose a health state yet? No. There you go. That injured her. So. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, that laugh tripped me up. Move that, move that, move that, move that, move that, move that, that. All right. How many knives is that? Okay, that lav was great. Hmm, seven to damage? I can't see it, but maybe you guys counted it. Right, let's see what this looks like when we reload. Okay, that looks great, dude. That looks great. <laughs> oh my god, this feels amazing. The fact that he's yellow, too. All uh, right. I love the laugh, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's seven. I believe it's seven. Wow. I love that laugh, dude. That is really good. I really, really like it. All right. Uh, Nina, we're gonna pick you up and we're gonna... Okay, they sound a bit involved. Uh, we're gonna see- we're gonna count exactly how many knives it takes, okay? So just stand still, be- be a good mannequin for us. I counted eight? Yeah, you might be right. Let's have a look. It's hard to see the HUD, honestly. I wish it was a bit bigger. Alright, Nina. Oh, shit. Let's have a look. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay. So they turn red when they're ready to go down in the next one. Cool. So it is eight. And when they're one knife away, you'll hear that little sound cue. Uh, we're gonna test the we're gonna test the power up now. Uh, Nina, you might need to. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just throw a bunch of knives at you, don't mind you. Yes, M warning resets it. It's a bit like. Uh, is there any other thing that works like that? It's a bit like Legion's power when you're recharging it and you lose it. As you can see, Starstruck activated because we were carrying someone, but there's no other survivor that is affected by. Right, he talks. So. Yeah, what does he say? I, I don't know. Alright, so one thing I've noticed is that if, if I throw them slowly... They all basically land in the same spot. But if you throw them fast, I'm not moving my mouse. There's like a bit of like, recoil to it. So it's kind of, you know, think of, think of like a normal FPS. You don't, you want to either... You either want to do it controlled to be more accurate, or you'll need to aim down to make up for the recoil, essentially. Very good. Oh, where's our Korean girlfriend? Nina, where'd you go? I'm not sure if this slows you down. It doesn't seem like it does. I'm not sure if it, if you're slowed down while you switch, or while you're actively... Um, Alright, so the, the charge bar that you see... This is hard if they move like this. Okay, let's see her bar. Yeah, her bar immediately goes down. So you, you, you cannot, like, 99 them with knives, then hit them, then down them. You, you either do it with knives or you do it with M1. You can't, like, do both at the same time, if that makes sense. That was a cool animation, yeah. Alright, yeah, I'm just gonna... Throw more knives and see if we can test the main event by pressing left control this time. Alright, we just need to... I do not know what that means. But it's probably Korean forward. Alright. Uh, okay. We're, there's also a feature where her laceration meter should go down with time. So if we're outside of chase, I imagine it will go down quicker. So, I'm gonna look at the HUD and see if that changes. Oh, uh, it's... Oh, there you go. There you go. This is to discourage you from, like, throwing knives and then forgetting about people. Right, Nina. So... It doesn't matter how much ammo we have, we should go infinite now. Alright, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, 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 Oh my god, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Judge. It was an accident. I didn't mean to stab her 600 times. All right, dude. That was... That is gonna be interesting when there's like six survivors around you. All right, are you all ready to watch the Mori now? <laughs> can we taste the range also? Yeah, we can We can do that. Uh, Nina, let's find a beautiful place for you to be... Uh, clubbed to death or something. And also, let's taste let's the range. Yeah, are you ready? I'm gonna go... Um, I'll probably remove the overlay so you guys get a beautiful... If you guys want to clip it and stuff. So you guys get a beautiful... Oh, I need to reload, right? You get a beautiful uh, look at it. Alright. Uh, first of all, let's test, let's test the... It goes down a bit from a distance, but... Is there like a max range to it? Nope. This is like, what, 25? To, like, about th almost 30 meters? Bing, boom, boop. Well, if there is a max range, it's pretty damn high. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, get ready. We're gonna have a look at it. Oh my god! Did he throw an autograph? Hello? Okay, dude, that's pretty sick. What do you guys think of it? Oh my god, dude. 
That was amazing. I really like it. We see the killer more than we see the survivor while they're dying. Oh, that's perfect, honestly. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. He does look really funny. I wonder if that's what he looks like when he's chasing after you. All right. Uh, shall we have a look at the add-ons now? You like it? I like it. I like it. I like it. Don't forget that all of this is PTB, so the sound, it, it does look pretty good, but the sound and everything could be a bit different when it comes out on the live servers. Let's have a little look at the add-on, shall we? Now that we understand how the power works a bit more. We'll start with the brown ones. Trick pouch. Increase the maximum carry blades by 10. Start the trial with 10 extra blades. All right, so that's pretty simple. Basically, just from 60 to 70. Not sure how, how good that would be. Because 60 is out of the allot. Oh my god, did he just wink at me? That's incredible, dude. That's incredible. I'm. Oh. Oh, God. What? What? Okay. Memento Blades. Gain 100% bonus points for showstopper score events. All right. So this is the this is the one meme add-on. Basically, you'll need extra blades to down them, but you get extra points. Don't use this. It's just, you know. I don't know. I honestly enjoyed this. Uh, the Killing Party Chords. Slightly increases movement speed while throwing blades. Uh, so it reminds me a bit of Plague, basically, where you, while you charge up, you're not as slow. This could be very, very good, depending on the percentage, I even for a brown. Because I imagine that if you're if you're faster while you while you're throwing, that means you can chase around them, get more hits in. All right, dude, I will not get used to that. Uh, Inferno wires, burn wires on the studio fire that kill four of the five no spin members. Their deaths gave rise to the trickster. Slight increases the duration of mind event. That's the special move. So you can go mura mura for longer. All right, dude. All right, I'm, I'm gonna have to ask you to stop that. Um, next up, to kill a Moonrock. Moderately increases the duration of main event. So basically the same as this, but stronger. Slightly increases the time before laceration meter starts decaying. So it lets you have more survivors with knives on them before you, uh, before they start going down in case you're like trying to hold the whole team together. Not sure how good that would be. Um, depends on the numbers. Lucky Blade, his first throwing knife knife to ever owned. Slightly increases each robber's less for a meter at the cave during when out of blades. <laughs> so basically, if you cannot reload, if you don't have blades, they don't lose their bleeding as uh, as quickly to give you time to reload. Uh, it, it seems like there's a long time before they start losing that, so it seems like this is not so good, but we'll see. Uh, the autograph. I think this is what he threw when he did the Mori. Initially increases the initial throw rates of blades. I'm guessing that's like initial cooldown. That's cool. Uh, cage heart shoes. Moderately increases movement speed while throwing blades. This will be good for sure. Yumi's murder. An audio file of a victim's crisp clear streak as a blade opened her up. G1 can incorporate the sound into one of his more popular tracks. Yeah. Moderately decreases survivor's saturation meter. This probably makes it so that instead of eight, you now can down them with six or seven. That's my, that's the way I understand it. A pocket watch worn by G1 during a live performance of I'll be waiting for you. It's a stage prop that doesn't work and never will. Considerably increases each survivor's last version made of the K when out of blades. So same as before, but a bit stronger. Ripper brace. A wrist brace was by G1 during the filming of his music video Ripper. Though unintentional, the design stabilizes the wrist better than many medical braces. It moderately increases the time before laceration meter starts decaying. Same idea. Fist spin soda. A limited edition can of soda promoting no spin, which is the group he belonged to. Uh, high sugar and caffeine content. Moderately increases the initial throw rate. Uh, basically throw knives faster uh, at the start. That seems that seems good. Uh, bloody boa. A boa that Jijon would drop around a victim's slash neck. A number of pockets are concealed with it within it. Increases the maximum carry blades by 15. So it's like the brown one, but a bit extra. Maybe you could probably stack them. Trick blades. Specialty blades that are only seen as faulty by those who lack imagination. A Jong Ji Woon dazzled spectators with the trick super form. Blades ricochet off the environment, that means they bounce, dealing an extra 100% laceration. Oh, so double damage, an extra 100. So if you're good enough, you can literally play Robert Ocelot. Uh, well, we're immediately going to test this one. And, and hit people around corners. Well, that could be really stupid. Let's go, dude. Uh, Edge of Revival album. The Trickster's debut album, The Chorus and Vicious Stone, was met with a mixed reaction from fans despite critical acclaim. Blade Shatter when hitting the environment? Oh my god. Uh, dealing 50% laceration to nearby survivors. So it, it deals half a knife if it explodes next to you. Uh, 
Well, you can use both of these, right? Because, yeah, if they if they explode, they can't ricochet. But this one seems to be more straightforward. Depending on the range of this explosion, this could also be super good. Because it, if it hits through, like, walls and stuff, I don't know. This could be either worthless or super broken. We'll see. A diamond cufflinks. Uh, cufflinks. Cufflinks uh, gouge into the eyes of a size, uh, sassying fan who made the mistake of stalking G1. Rubbing off the blood, there's no much. There's so much to be seen in the glitter. When a survivor slash your meter is one blade away from this maximum, to reveal the aura for six seconds. So that moment when you hear the the little scream, you basically get amaliers on them to make sure that they don't mind game you and they get away. Could be good. Cut through you single. The first single released by No Spin after Jubon joined their ranks. Score than all kill on the Korean charts. Blades pierce through survivors. Subsequent survivors hit by the same blade receive 50% extra laceration. This is, I imagine, a really, really powerful, like, crowd control tool. Uh, basically means that when you hit a survivor, they don't stop the blade, it goes through them. And anyone else caught behind it, um, one, two, or other three survivors, I imagine, will get 50% of the effect. That could be really silly in, like, basement situations where you have three survivors coming out and you just... Imagine you go, uh, like, you use the, the main event ability and you start going, like, ham. Like, how the hell are they gonna get out? Um, uh, your guess is as good as mine. That will be strong. That will be... Yeah, you cannot body block against it. That's true as well. So that's really interesting. Uh, and then we're gonna head to the Iridescence. Iridescent photo card. A glass-like photo molded from the fog itself. G1's eye eyes shimmer holographically on his grinning face. When a survivor's laceration meter is one blade hit away from the maximum, they are inflicted with the exposed status effect. Uh, this doesn't seem good. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, basically, when they are one knife away from going down, they go down in one hit. But, but, they would also go down if you just threw one more knife and caught them? I don't quite understand the, the, the idea behind this one. Uh, they are healthy though. Yeah, yeah, they are healthy. Okay, it's not a crazy idea that maybe it is easier to put six knives on M1 than it is to put seven, or sorry, seven, uh, seven knives on M1 than to put eight and 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 then M1. Because there, maybe there's a cooldown when you switch or something that I haven't really noticed. Uh, doesn't seem so good. Um, but... But may maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing something. It's true that they're exposed, but you could also... You could also just throw one more knife um, without this add-on, and it would be similar, right? Uh, interesting. Interesting. Well, I don't quite get it, but we'll see it. Uh, Death Throws Compilation. A collection of final sounds from G1's victims, adopted to a vinyl record. Terrifying and emotionally raw. Laceration- Oh, by the way, this also makes it so that you cannot down with your knives. So that's a bit strange. Um, laceration caused by blades is based on proximity to the target, starting at a minimum of 50 percent. Each blade hit increases the laceration caused by blades to a maximum of 200 percent. Once a blade misses, the laceration caused by blades to initial value. Okay, this is insane. Um, so basically, it's like, this is basically the iridescent uh, knife for this guy, but it doesn't start strong. It basically makes it so that I I'm gonna guess it goes in increments of 50, although maybe maybe it's not. So your first knife, weaker. Your second knife, normal. Your third knife, uh, stronger. Your fourth knife, way stronger. And there it stops, 200%. But the catch is, you can't miss. If you miss, you go back to 50. So basically, if you play against a, a trickster that's super good, that maybe has played a lot and just never misses, I guess they never miss, huh? They, this should destroy you, like straight up. Uh, although I don't understand the whole proximity thing. I don't understand the proximity. Like, does it get better the closer you are? Well, we'll see. Uh, yeah, these two uh, iridescents are a bit weird. The purple ones seem great, and uh, the extra knives and the extra speed from the yellow and browns and green, uh, that, that seems adequate. Do you guys want to test the bouncy knives? Oh, I want to test that. And... We can test this. There you go. That's for you, chat. Yeah? Alright, let's test it. Nia? Let's go. Um, what's a... 
Fun bright map. Go here. Armin. Armand? No, we're not going Armand. <laughs> There's a Moy without knives? Oh, really? Well, Nina. You wanna... You wanna not be... Uh, stabbed a bunch? Yep. <sighs> Alright, that's great. Then we'll check out the other Mori and we'll check out this thing. The perks again? Don't worry, guys. If you miss the perks, we're gonna have everything compiled together in literally two minutes. Don't you worry. No new map? There's no new maps. I think the developers have expressed. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, from what I've seen in their streams, I think they've said that they're not gonna make new maps until they're done reworking the existing ones. So maybe no new maps for this or the next or the next after the next one chapter. 60 knives seems like a lot to start with. I mean, it is a lot to start with, but think about it. Like with Huntress, you take two hatchets to down someone and you have five. With this, you need eight. And you, you're gonna miss a lot more. Like, it's not like Hunters where you're gonna miss a few. Like, you're gonna miss many of these. Look how quick you can throw them, dude. Yeah, I think any add-ons to increase that. All right, so Nina? Um, I'm gonna need you to stay behind. Yeah, that that's that's a good spot. Like, right here, behind the ban. Yeah, this is good. Maybe a little bit, a uh, bit more separated from it. All right. Oh. Uh, Let's see if we can find a fun angle. Mm. Oh my god, yeah, this... I think this uh, is a bit complex, but... You get the idea, right? Alright, so the idea with this add-on is that she doesn't go down, but now she's exposed. Ooh, that vroom, vroom, vroom. Nina, you wanna come in the open a little bit? We don't have any blades, so maybe the more is different now. Oh, try aiming at the floor? Um... I think the, the effect would be similar, but if you guys wanna see it, sure. I'll try aiming at the floor. Any double bound? I don't think so. But yeah, throwing at the floor might make it easy to like... Nah, it doesn't double bound. But yeah, you could be chasing a survivor. Let's say the survivor is this phone booth. And you could be doing this. I don't understand what's the advantage, but maybe it's easier to hit them like that. That's the recoil. Alright, I'm gonna get rid of all of them. And we're gonna check if the if the more is any different. Uh, by the way, the range on this looks ridiculous. Oh my god, dude! All right, you even the bounce goes really far. All right, you know. Sorry about this. Uh, we're gonna go again full gameplay so you guys can see it. Hmm. Doesn't seem like there's a second one, but it was still pretty damn dope. What did you guys say? <laughs> well, I didn't mind watching it again. So, no, no loss. But whoever debated us, shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> right, guys. So, it's time to say goodbye to YouTube. I'm gonna stop recording and I'm gonna upload this on YouTube literally right now. Me and Nina have done some work so that we can put this out in literally... What's the time? Less than an hour after the release. So, hopefully everyone will will be able to, to enjoy it. Bye-bye, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Click on all the ads and subscribe and, and whatnot. Thank you so much. Uh, super happy to explore this. We'll be live for a little while and we're gonna explore all the add-ons, uh, see the new perks, and we try it on some killers and do some other fun stuff. But thanks so much for watching from YouTube. Mwah.